Okay, hello everyone. It seems it's time to start our webinar. Welcome and thank you for joining. My name is Yulia Makluk. Uh, I'm a potter and environmentalist from Ukraine. And tonight I will be your host, or this morning if you are in the USA or anywhere, anywhere in that part of the world. Um, our webinar is called the Terracotta Warriors, Personal Stories of Ceramic Artists versus War. Thank you for joining us tonight or um, this morning, as I already said. We are really excited to see all of the interest and support that we got from you while preparing for this webinar. A lot of people liked, commented and shared the announcement and up to 60 registered for an event. I think that for such a niche specific theme as ceramicist and war, this is a great success to have so many passionate folks like you to join us. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, please let me know if you can hear the screen and you can write down like whether you can hear me and see me well. Uh, also, this chat box will be used for questions to our speaker later on so please use it it's all for you also if you have any technical issues i'll try to do my best to fix them <laughs> uh, um, and wish me luck in that um, anyways um, if you are watching us on instagram because there's also an instagram live uh, streaming i suggest you better join us on zoom uh, i will share a link to the leaf translation in my stories just right after the introduction uh, because like the Instagram uh, doesn't allow us to have multiple speakers and to share screens and presentations. So if you want to join us right after this uh, live streaming goes off, there will be a link to the Zoom uh, in, uh, in my last stories and you can join that. Uh, with some of you, we are already acquainted uh, by the means of social media or my publications of sustainability in ceramic practice or by Patreon. Uh, for those of you who don't know me yet, uh, as I said, I'm Yulia McLuke. I'm a self-taught potter and environmental um, and sustainability consultant. I live in Irpin, it's near Kiev in Ukraine. Uh, and since the beginning of the full-scale war um, and Russian invasion in February last year, I was trying to find ways to use my creative skills to ease the suffering and to help Ukrainians in our country. Uh, and there were a few ideas, like one of the project was uh, called Hoste Potter, and it was a, net a network of international uh, potters who hosted our refugees from Ukraine and helped them, you know, to uh, continue with their uh, craft um, and also to uh, find some safety uh, while it was dangerous in Ukraine and still is. Uh, then there was a few fundraising campaigns to support our army and to help with humanitarian needs. And this webinar uh, about the war and ceramics is part of the new project called Saving the World as a Potter. Uh, where I want to celebrate and empower um, ceramicists and potters on possible by people who support my work on Patreon. Uh, thank you all if you are uh, one of my patrons. You uh, allow these webinars to be free for, of charge and uh, free for everyone to join. Uh, so let me briefly uh, introduce our topic and then our honored guests, because tonight I'm only a, a host and we'll have three very interesting and different um, ceramic artists and potters who will uh, tell us about their um, stories, uh, their personal stories and creative stories in relations to war. Uh, so military conflicts are known for perhaps as long as human civilization itself. And in 2022, major wars have taken place in Ethiopia, Myanmar, Afghanistan, Le Lebanon, and of course, Ukraine. Uh, they bring chaos, uh, they cause suffering, and they uh, claim millions of lives. And artists have been known to be deeply moved by such people's catastrophes um, for Ever. They create pieces that reflect the realities of war, and often artists take place in conflicts themselves, uh, either by directly joining one of the sites 
or by engagement in political or cultural battle. Uh, and uh, ceramicists are not an exemption of this. One of the examples that comes to mind is the art installation called Blood Swept Lens and Seas of Red, uh, which took place in London, Great Britain. It was created uh, by an artist called Paul Cummings to commemorate 100 year anniversary of Britain's involvement in the World War, World War I. And it consisted, uh, it consisted of almost 900,000 of ceramic red poppies placed at the London Tower. Another example, uh, a similar one, was made in Syria by uh, Boutania Al Ali, a professor at Damascus University, um, University's Faculties of Arts. And it was uh, hundreds of ceramic doves, uh, white birds, uh, hovering over the Today, we uh, are going to listen and learn from three other prominent potters and ceramic artists who are actively engaged in war-related craft at the moment. So please welcome uh, Aaron Toole from the USA, a potter who has made and given away more than 25,000 of worsened cups. He is a US Marine Corps veteran of the Gulf War and he now works in the ceramic slab in the Department of Art Practice at Berkeley. Erin, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, we also have Ivan Grigorchuk from Ukraine. He is a self-taught ceramic artist and founder of Vitor Ceramics, and he lives with his family near the infamous Bucha in Ukraine. Hi, hi Ivan, how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, yeah. And I actually, Ivan and I are neighbors. It's like 10 minutes by car uh, between our uh, our homes. And please welcome also Nadia Otraja from Ukraine. She is a ceramics sculptor and art working, uh, currently working in the city at the city of Dnipro. It is just 100 kilometers from the front line. Uh, in Ukraine, and she continues working on her art. Uh, thank you for being with us, Nadia. Hello, it's an honor for me to participate here. Uh, it's my first uh, speaking pu publicly since the war began, uh, and uh, it's also very important to me to have a voice. Uh, so thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, thanks for agreeing uh, to join us, even in your, uh, you know, rather tough uh, circumstances. Um, and thank you all for uh, like coming to this event, and all, uh, especially for the speakers and also for the audience. Each of the speakers will have a short presentation on their practice, and then we'll be able to ask questions after each presentation. So. Uh, like if you have questions or comments or anything to add, just write them in the chat and I'll do my best to um, read them and hopefully the speakers will answer. So uh, without further ado, let us start the presentations. Erin, uh, the virtual floor is yours. And for those on Instagram, the leave streaming will now uh, end, finish, and I'll share a link to Zoom in the stories. Thank you all. Hey, uh, you got to make me a host. Is that what? Yep. Yeah, I will. Uh, all right. You should be a host now or in a minute. All right. Oops. Is that working? All right. All right. Yeah, we can see your present. Oh, that works perfectly. All right. So uh, thanks. It's a real honor to be here. I'm sorry if I get emotional. I'm going to start a timer here so I don't <laughs> talk too long but um, I'm real honored to be um, invited and my heart goes out to everybody in the in the conflict zone I'm sorry you know I joined the Marine Corps in 1989 glass knows the new world order I really thought the world would be a better place and I'm, I'm super sad to be talking about this kind of stuff now we're talking about war and violence so I'll try to be polite and not swear but it's kind of hard to have a, a honest conversation about war and violence 
that is 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 polite and inoffensive. So sorry. My grandfather was in the Marine Corps in World War II. My father was in the Army in Vietnam. I was in the 91 Gulf War. That's me 100 pounds ago. I was in the 91 Gulf War. This is taken during the day in the oil fires in Kuwait. Came back and it was a video game that the gas mask that I wore thinking the air was poisonous was a toy for kids ages five and up. Now, how are you gonna just tell a five-year-old what, what the, why you're wearing a gas mask? There's also a video game. My war was a video game, wasn't a game. After I got back from the Gulf War, I volunteered for embassy duty. Uh, I was an embassy guard in Rome 15 months and then Paris for 15 months. Then I got out, took the GI Bill, went to a community college. My first instructor was Japanese American raised in internment camps in the United States. He said, all art's political. You know, it, everything is, is making a statement. So there's a popcorn bowl and salt and pepper shakers for the next war on TV. This is undergrad, so it's like 30 years old. And these are lawn ornaments made in America for export only. Those are the size and shape of a chemical or anti-tank landmine. And then my first year of grad school was the end of Gulf War II, air quotes. There were 393 US combat casualties for that war, that first year of the war. So I made, glazed, decorated, and shot 393 cups, one for each of the dead. And then uh, this is a buddy, his, one of the Marines, only one Marine made it through the war. This is 1940s, World War II. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but in Photoshop, I closed the eyes of all the guys that died. And then I just kept making cups and putting them in formations like this. And this is a buddy, he went out, went out to the woods and he shot a cup, right? So all the cups can go unchipped for 100,000 to a million years, or a little piece of lead hits them and that's dead. And the same with, you know, what's uh, one death is a tragedy, a million is a statistic. That's garbage. A million more dead is, a, is an incalculable tragedy. Everybody had a mother, everybody had a father. And this is just that moment. So, you know, where the cup could go unchipped or uncharred, but then a little piece of lead hits it. Then I wrote a grant to go to China, to make China in China, which was silly. The Chinese do it way better <laughs> than I do. I was complaining to my father. I was like, dad, nobody in China likes my work. He said, son, China's a quarter of the world's population. Somebody's got to like your work. And this is the guy, Shui Bo Wang. He joined the Red Army when he was 16 to protect the, protect the little matchstick girl from capitalism. And my father, around the same time, joined the army to protect the world against communism, you know, both. When I met him, Shui Bo Wang, he was coming back to, uh, back to China for the first time in 20 years. He was in Tiananmen with his students, you know, hoping for social reform. It didn't work out. He, he was just coming back from Canada for the first time. But just that, you know, the hopefulness as a young soldiers, you think you're going to do something, you know, to change the world and it doesn't work out so much. Uh, my father was in Vietnam. And I got a grant to go to Vietnam and make cups there too. So that's the same, what, 40 years, 50 years separate. But my father in Vietnam, me in Vietnam, I had a much better time. <laughs> and then I made uh, a couple of hundred cups while we were there. That's just the clay, right? My father's all his patrol books and maps from the Vietnam where we're all staying with red clay. So I, I left half there and brought half home with the idea that we'd sell these for uh, Agent Orange and unexploded ordnance remediation. We dropped more bombs in Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos than all sides in all theaters in World War II. And then this is part of a thing called combat paper. So we shred up old uniforms. So there's my uniform from the Gulf War, my dad's uniform from Vietnam. We shred up the, shred up the uniforms and make paper. I mean, we make art. <laughs> But this is spun off. This was combat paper. Now there's peace paper and uh, frontline arts. They all do a similar thing. Then I got a grant to go to, to France near Verdun. And this is a map. So that's where we're down at the bottom. But the, uh, the director of the program said, there are parts of the forest she is forbidden. And that's from 100 years ago, from the war in World War I. And just the idea that 100 years later, parts of the forest are still forbidden. You know, you think about wars ending. So I made about 800 cups there in France. And then, and then the, if you find this little, this little hut there in the forest, you can grab a cup and some water or whiskey. And then I got to go to Germany. And the, the difference between France and Germany was pretty funny. Like 
France lunch was two hours every day. Germany lunch was 30 minutes. <laughs> and, you know, one, one day made work, one, one day glazed work, one, one day and gave all the work away. But it was really interesting in, in France, people were much more open about their experiences in the war and, you know, their family's part in it. But in Germany, people were much more guarded and, and the conversations happened, but it was like, in Germany, we don't talk about the war. And then they told me, you know, can we talk about the war? You know, they talk about it. And it was really striking how much, like you think about the veterans all the time, but not the families of the veterans and how that affects, you know, the whole family, not just the combatants. And then this was in Kansas City, got to do a thing where um, we made cups and it was mostly for vets, but it was all, we also opened it up for people who'd lost family to violence, like military sexual trauma is rape and war is murder. And, you know, that happens outside of the military context. And so this was really, so people would come by and, and we'd make cups for, for their family and then the cups were all displayed and, and then people could talk and and that I think is the biggest thing with the cups is just the community and the conversation. It's not about what I have to say. It's, you know, it's, it's a, you take the cup back into your life and then somebody you already know, love and trust, maybe they can have a conversation. This is a piece up in Limoges right now. This is the size and shape of a CBU 87 cluster bomb, holds about 202 cups, which is the number of bomblets in a, in a subunit in a cluster bomb. And then it's suspended from the ceiling above an aerial photograph with the footprint of one of those bombs, 200 meters by 400 meters. That's in the most right now. And then just going around the country and the world making, this is at Walter Reed Medical Center in the East Coast there. I got to make cups there. And it was striking because, you know, normally like at a gallery or um, on the street when I'm throwing, the cups are kind of dark and, you know, but in this hospital setting, the cups were uplifting and, you know, everybody, there were a lot of combat vets and combat cat wounds and, and, you know, so it was a different conversation. Yeah, just cups. Yeah, this is the thing in the veteran community. Now they're talking a lot about post-traumatic growth, right? That like, you can't, you can't, get rid of it, but you can grow from it. And, and I think that's the biggest thing for all this stuff is community, for suicide, for addiction, for depression, for anxiety. You know, the biggest the biggest uh, combat or thing to help with that is community. And so that's, that's what I try to do with the cups is just build community. Okay, I didn't want to take too much time. So <laughs> that's that. You're not, Aaron. We have plenty of time, actually. Uh, so uh, you can go on if you have something to say, because like uh, you have lots of materials and the work that you are doing is amazing. Oh, you're very kind. But I'll, I'll, we can talk later. We can talk more. I'll let somebody else go. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you so much for this brief presentation. Uh, uh, Dear audience, if you have questions or any comments to Aaron and his work, please uh, write down in the chat. We have a, a comment from Robin, so powerful. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Um, so uh, actually I had a question um, because uh, I've learned about Aaron's work. I was striking by how like you are using such a kind of simple medium, like just throwing a mug. This is something like most of the potters can do, right? And it doesn't take too much time. Uh, and then you turn it and into a conversation started, starter. You turn it, it in a, like a community building tool. Um, how does it work for you? And uh, what was the reaction, some of the reactions from your audience, from the vets and from the people who never have been to war? Yeah, I mean, well, I think everybody's affected by it, whether they realize it or not, you know, how it, it seeps into the culture. And, you know, it was, you know, going to Vietnam and making cups, you know, having dinner with a guy who lived through an American airstrike, you know, and- um, As an American. As an American, you know, you know, so it's like, and I, I gotta say too, right? Like, I, I think for America, like most of us, we we go to war zones as tourists, right? We do our year overseas deployed and then we come home. That's not, you know, it's a different, it's a different thing than being in the combat zone. And and I think on some level, 
you know, it's it's weird for veterans because we're so detached from the battlefield, mm. you know, that like the reality, you know, seeing the gas mask that you wore, thinking the air was poisonous as a toy for, for children, you know, it's a little weird disconnect or having people talk bragging about playing Call of Duty as if that's something, you know. But I think for people like in Vietnam, you know, everybody, the mothers and, and children and fathers, they, they all experienced it together, you know, and so that there's kind of a little more community, I think, than you know, this other stuff. But I mean, not saying it's better, obviously, but but just, you know, that's such an abstract thing for most of us. And then I think, you know, the people who experience it the most, they don't want to talk about it because it's painful. You know, my yeah. My father didn't talk about his war. My grandfather didn't talk about his war until I came back from mine. And, and I didn't understand that until my son, you know, when he was little, he said, dad, how come you were bad and now you're good? And I said, what? And he said, you were a soldier, right? And I just started crying. I was like, oh, let's go watch SpongeBob. Because <laughs> I didn't know, you know, to be demonized or idolized for something you did or didn't do in a context you can never explain. It feels easier not to talk about it, but, but that has consequences too, you know, and it's, it doesn't, so, so that's the hope again, it's just that the cups bring out the conversation. And even for some of the guys that are, that are super gung ho and like, you know, they think what they did was right. You know, it still can, can open up a conversation with a daughter or, you know, another vet or something that yeah. might get some more insight into to dealing with it. Yeah. yeah. And I bet you had like tons of interesting and deep conversation with your 25,000 of mugs that you distributed. But I mean, but that's the thing is like so much of it, it's, it's, you can't, you know, there's nothing to say really, you know, there's nothing to really, you know, just to be in company with people and let people tell their stories. Yeah. You know, the, the Irish bartender, a burden shared is a burden have. I don't, I don't know if that's true, you know, but like, I mean, when yeah. is it, when is it okay to talk about these kind of things, you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's just not polite conversation, <laughs> you know, so a lot of people suffer yeah. alone, I think. I see. All right. Uh, thank you for sharing this personal side of it. And we have uh, several like more professional questions to you before we move to our next speaker. So I'll read them aloud one by one. First is from uh, Lori. Aaron, do you paint on any of your pots or use mostly decals for the graphics? Do you find any additional level of catharsis in the act of painting the emotion? versus applying the message. Aha, uh -huh. painting versus applying. That was one. Another question from iPhone. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have the name. How will your work continue? What is your current project? And the next question is from Robin. Do you do a lot of work with the VA or do you mostly work on your own? So there is a lot. Uh, to discuss, uh, you can pick or you can try to be quick. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do. I do. I, the painting, I'll hand paint the back of the decals sometimes. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like that guy in Clockwork Orange, you know, like making the cups that it's, you know, because you're reliving all your personal trauma and then people share their their own stories, which is, you know, I'm I'm humbled that people will share things like that. But but still, sometimes it does feel really hard. I don't know if it's catharsis mm -hmm. or or just the sign of a mental illness that I haven't gotten over <laughs> that I, that I need to keep making cups. And that's, you know, like that just keep coming, you know, the more, like I keep thinking you know, that someday my work will be irrelevant. You know, like that cluster mm. bomb, thing. I was, I had a show last, you know, and I was going to put it up and I was like, ah, it doesn't matter. And then the Ukraine came out and, and they're using, you know, they're using cluster bombs. Yeah, they do. I hate, I hate. I hate that it's relevant, you know, like, but the Americas, you know, we're the ones we won't sign off. We won't stop using them either. So anyway, uh, I don't work with the VA very much. Um, usually private organizations or, you know, because I give the work away, museum or, uh, you know, galleries don't want to deal with me, but, but museums and universities and things like that do. And, and so this mm -hmm. summer, I'm, I'm hoping to do a couple things across country um, at different museums and with veterans groups and, and other people who suffered different kinds of trauma in the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Uh, Thanks. Yeah. And there is an explanation. ZVA stands for the Veterans Administration in the US. Yeah, thank you for this explanation. 
Uh, all right then, Erin, thank you so much for the work that you are doing and for being with us uh, tonight, with, or this morning. I keep saying tonight because it's evening for me. Uh, and um, yeah, I think, I, I mean, I truly believe that uh, conversations and um, safe spaces and like peer to peer um, discussions and places are very important. And I guess we in Ukraine will get to that point um, somewhere in the future as well when this war is over. But um, we will now move our conversation to a different context, to a context context of a country where like which is uh, has been and is being under murderous attack uh, from the Russian Federation and there are ceramic artists who are struggling to keep working in under such conditions and not only they do the work uh, but they only help others and I am now inviting Ivan Rihorchuk to uh, share his and his family stories with us. Uh, you need to hover over his um, profile picture and click the three dots and pick make a host. And then we can continue from there. Okay. Should so, be all right now. Thank you so much. There are more comments to Aaron in the chat, and you can go on and read them. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ivan, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks. Hi, everyone. So I'm Ivan. Uh, I'm self-taught ceramic artist, and like, it's a bit chaotic to speak after the Aaron's introduction because it was so powerful and really emotional in different aspects. And speaking about ceramics, about clay work, uh, my way is different because uh, it became my like main job or occupation before the war started. So I came a long way from different apprenticeships, uh, reading a lot of books, like touching the clay, digging into clay right with my hands like to understand it how it works how how it don't work doesn't work and uh, we live as a family not far from kiev in com rather comfortable before bucha and irpini region and uh, when the war started it all just changed it like raised all the previous story because Suddenly you wake up and you hear explosions right, right on, uh, right in five kilometers from you. And then it all starts detonating around. Uh, so ceramics became a medium, also like a medium between us and the world. Uh, like, Previous, previously, like the the most valuable part in my ceramic process, in our ceramic process as a family, uh, was interaction with people. Uh, it what inspired us the most, and it's what where the most interesting projects were emerged. It what it's what built our connections with the world and. Uh, expanded our communications. It's where I came to making my first bowl, like just after just a conversation with a friend. And uh, it's what fascinating fascinated me the most when I love to I loved to participate in different open space markets like in on city squares and all that noisy city holidays and uh, really it was a, a miracle every time well when people came to our like humble stand and picked something it and like find they they found like something they 
something there, something very special in each piece. And it was interesting to, for me, uh, at first place, it was interesting to discover something new with like every work. I tried to make not like a series of, um, I tried to I, I tried to rediscover my skills with uh, every batch of works and uh, like for the 10 years I came to my own signature style and th those monochromic colors and and uh, here I came to making tea wear I will try to to show my try to start showing my screen so i hope you see it so here i can pull to yeah make we can see we can see it everything works fine thank you yes, thanks so here i came to uh, stopped on making tea wear and uh, jumped into into the tea culture world with really a lot of wonderful people and uh, it's where war trapped us so we left our home like from the last days of February and uh, it was a challenge because I barely imagine, I could barely imagine if I ever be able to make any new item again. Like really, I didn't know what happens there on the past, which in which all our previous story turned, but then in a month where, when our village was liberated by Ukrainian army, we came back to our home and discovered that it was really intact. It like something of like miraculous coincidence because like the house of neighbors was hit by shrapnel and there were a lot of, I will show them later, fragments of art artillery pieces around, but everything in inside our home was intact like all the chaos which we left we met with it when we returned mm. and my as i started making again because i felt the necessity of like transforming the experience of harsh reality around into my clay work and then i i think i can correlate the feelings with something we uh, what Aaron do because it really heals you when you start making something when you transform the anxiety and uh, really all the horrible pictures in your in your head into like live object into something that transforms by fire into some into the object which serves to people after and uh, at that time i started to collect all the i started to use uh, all the collected fragments of artillery which i found around my home like different different things from bullet to mine pieces into i will show you try to show you the picture I mixed it into clay and use it. Oh, I'm sorry. I mixed the I mixed the particles particles into clay and started to make slabs just like to uh, transform those sharp feelings into something that can later be fired as a. So I have a series of those just white slabs and I think I will, they are half finished and I think I will finish them maybe after the war ends because I, I still don't see the, the final page in, in, what, in what item I can turn them. But I also as a reflection of the experience, the way to deal with war, I made a, a tea bowl like a chawan with, hmm. sorry, I need to share the screen again. Really, hmm. my apologies. 
Yes. So I hope you see, I made the challenge with uh, several fragments put into its walls and they were like penetrating the walls. And it was a kind of experience of all my, of transforming all my previous tea culture practices into something which came through war, but still remain functional. Yes, it was important to, to keep it functional. So I... Mm -hmm. So it turned, turned out some into, into the final object and it keeps all the feelings, all the atmosphere of like my ceramic way. It, so it was like a brief overlook of the artwork during the war. But uh, aside of, pers uh, of personal experience, there is also a strong, uh, I will close it. Yeah. There is also a very strong social uh, importance of our social practices of our social communications during war, because uh, all of us in Ukraine, we have relatives, friends in armed forces, in volunteering, uh, in volunteering funds or someone who left the country and struggled to restore kind of not I don't I can't call it a comfortable life but restore like an ability to live further to live through different really hard experiences so uh, what war did to us as a family it like reunited rediscovered all our connections and through my ceramic works, I can gather attention, I can uh, like speak worldwide to all that auditory, which with which we were connected before. And uh, my first, uh, uh, my first series of uh, pottery, which uh, remained intact uh, during the occupation, during the R Russian occupation, when we uh, came back, came back home and discovered it. We sell it through the charitable auctions, and uh, we shared all the prof all the profits, all the yes, all the profits with volunteering organizations. All uh, spent it to uh, cover the urgent needs of our friends in armed forces. And uh, later, when new works gradually appeared, uh, it served as a bridge between us and the kindest and really kindest and, and very supportive community of all our friends so ceramics now it's like a tool of exchange like a medium between us here in ukraine and the world and when we sell a cup i really can't can't name it just selling a cup we like transfer transfer something made by me by us as a family, something of our experience with the people far, far away. And we get that material help, which we share here in form of really efficient actions, things supplied to people. Mm. And with continuation of my, of my work, of it's not just about making things it about it's also about speaking about us about our, our experience about important messages and insights from ukraine which i share mainly on my instagram we share spirit of like usual living in ukraine through these conditions we share like how to remain alive not lose our human nature but in the same time keep like keep achieving our freedom and freedom of our people. It's a fragile balance to to not turn into a monster, into a monster, but to keep that keep walking on the on that edge between sometimes between life and death because it was really close in March when we escaped the occupation. And it is really close for a lot of our people on the East and South. And 
like so ceramics for me it's also a tool for communication and a tool for speaking about our visions of ukraine nowadays and like that look into the future into a better future that we want to achieve something like very simple but all at once and i think this is it and if you if someone have questions thank you so much ivan uh i'm sorry maybe it was a bit chaotic and some some i mean it's a beautiful and very personal um account um oh. thank you so much for being um for being so true to yourself and for allowing us to also have a glimpse of into your experience um i guess yeah people can uh, i invite people to write their comments and questions in chat and while they are writing i just want to share my own impression of uh one uh, once i saw this chavan that you made with the shards i saw it on instagram in spring when i also returned back to european after it was freed from the russian invaders and uh, i mean I also, I mean, I lived in a city which was, you know, also partially destroyed and there were these shards like, actually everywhere. I could, I still find them on my yard. And then I saw these very shards. These are like very sharp pieces of rusted metal. And I saw them like incorporated in this, yeah, yeah, pieces like that into this very, very delicate, very beautiful turquoise, bowl or chavan and without saying a word without like reading the description immediately i felt you know like this emotional connection and also like overwhelming um sense that you cannot describe in words but it is this as you said it's this thin line this like balance between destruction and beauty and love and fear uh, that I think you, yeah, you just perfectly expressed in your work. Um, yeah. Another photo. And I recommend to everyone, uh, if you are interested in either a tea culture or a life in Ukraine, uh, then uh, please go on Instagram and find Viter Ceramics and follow Ivan uh, to see his insights in and, and his photos. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a few a few comments in the chat. Paulina writes, that's beautiful and heartbreaking. Jill Phillips says, all your work is so beautiful. Thank you, Ivan. Hilary writes, beautiful work and very touching. I like uh, that you've included metal from objects of war. It makes the work very powerful. A practical question. Do you need to fire the tea balls in a sagar because of the metal inclusions? What temperature do you fire to, please? Mm -hmm. I'll write. Uh, I'll read all the questions and then you can answer them. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron, our speaker, uh, previous speaker, says, "Thank you for sharing your story. Do you have your kiln, or do you have a community of potters you work with? So do you uh, fire yourself or with someone else?" Yes, and I'm Robin says. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Using the actual shrapnel to create the metaphor of turning sharp feelings into something else is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for the question. So I will gradually. So them. do you use a sagar? Uh, what temperature? And do you use your own kill or a community kill? Mm, like currently I use my own, own kill. Previously I worked in like as apprentice in community kiln in Alexander Miroshnichenko's uh, studio. He now he is he left Ukraine with family because of war in his uh, town in Kharkiv region. He is in the USA. But okay, so I now I use my own kiln, electric kiln, and I fire. The temperature is uh, about 100, uh, 1,150. 
uh, or or more. It depends on the mix of clays I use for the for my works for the batch. And uh, yes, I use I use a sagar for the after firing, like I call it inverted raku, <laughs> because. Uh, I, uh, firstly, I fire my works to a stoneware condition, and then I uh, fire them in a sagar with uh, wood, wooden chips and pieces of wood, like um, to carbonize the works and uh, uh, create a reduction atmosphere, and uh, like it blackens the clay body and uh, rid. It does a reduction with all the oxides, so it's a, a kind of raku, but it uh, allows me to remain, uh, to leave the item uh, food safe and fully functional, because it it does only like an outer an outer effects, and uh, due to the slow heating, it uh, doesn't ruin the clay body, the ceramic body. Because uh, and metal inclusions uh, that. Um, that particular chavan was fired only uh, in uh, oxidation atmosphere without any sagar, like as it is in openly in the electric kiln. And uh, yes, and it I didn't have... it didn't explode. No, uh, I I was afraid of that because uh, I tried to fire like one of the slabs before, like to test what what will happen with those particles and when i saw that some of them uh get melted some of them remains uh like an oxide powder and some of the some of them like uh unify with the ceramic body there was no explosions or cracks or something and then i put this chavan into into the kiln already glazed it was interesting also what what will happen with the glaze Somehow they they unified, and it was all right. No uh, no firing defects with it, and I look, was I can, say, I can say I was happy about it because overall story isn't so bright, but I was happy to achieve the result without do losing. Do the... you still have it? Sorry, do you still have it, or did you sell it? Uh, I have it. I keep it. Uh, I don't know. Will I sell it? Will I ever sell it? Like right now, it remains here. I don't keep it like specially, but right now it remains here in our house, like a part of experience. Yeah. Maybe one day I will send it to some kind of gallery. It was exhibited in. That's what I wanted to suggest, yeah. if I may. <laughs> Uh, because you see, it touches uh, everyone's imagination. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you so much, Ivan, for your story and for everything that you and your family are doing to help people of Ukraine. Um, I wish you all the best with your practice and, uh, of course, with <laughs> life in general. Uh, and now I would like to uh, give a word to our next speaker, to Nadia Otraja from Dnipro. She is a sculptor working in ceramics and stoneware, and she also works um, for a municipal company that helps other artists. So uh, let's hear what she has to, uh, to share, and I also have to uh, point that Nadia uh, works from a quite a um, dangerous uh, place right now. She's in, in Dnipro, which is close to the front line. And uh, just today we had like another massive rocket attack from the Russians, like all over Ukraine with there were like 61, if I'm not mistaken, 61. No, no, it was 71 and 61 was uh, Drones. like air forces, yes. Yeah, so uh, this courageous woman is able to work on her art and create uh, beautiful and powerful sculptures in such conditions. Nadia, the floor is yours. And uh, do you have a screen sharing uh, ability? Uh, please give me the uh, yeah, Ivan, the power to, yeah. <laughs> to share the screen. Plus the share screen, screen sharing powers to Nadia. Okay, you are host now. 
Yep. Uh, share. I hope. Yes. Do you see this? Yes. Yes, we can see your photo. Yeah, this is me uh, before the war, like uh, a little bit happier and uh, not so skinnier. Uh, I'm actually a sculptor, a uh, professional sculptor with the educational card or whatever it means. Uh, but uh, my soul is uh, on ceramic. Be why? Because... Um, Ceramic can be so co colorful and so powerful uh, with the uh, colors, uh, like texture and ability to uh, uh, perform not only with the form, but with the, like, uh, like in the real life. So before war, this is uh, me and my uh, partner, uh, we worked together. Uh, we were traveling around Ukraine uh, to do some symposiums. I uh, share you, with you uh, only like the ceramic stuff because uh, I made some stone, metal and so on and it's not interesting for you. And this one work, it's uh, in uh, the village uh, where they have... Uh, a school for ceramists, uh, young uh, artists, but uh, now they are in occupation. And uh, this, uh, the summer before the war, and this work was like uh, the Zoofs is still in the Europe, and the Europe is the round uh, girl inside the sphere, and the triangle it's the bull who is uh, going to the water. So like we are making monumental sculptures. What I like about ceramics. Look, uh, this is my works before the war. I was uh, uh, like learning how the uh, surface can be, uh, could be different with uh, only just making uh, the surface different, uh, working with the slips, with the stains, with raw materials, with the different varieties of uh, texture and so on. Uh, this works, I uh, had participation uh, in the exhibition and I sold uh, them and donate money uh, to the um, uh, military forces because it was uh, exhibition uh, like in the first months of the war and uh, I evacuate to Lviv it's a western city uh, in uh, Ukraine and because the uh, uh, Russian military was really quick, uh, really fast going to the, from the uh, south. And uh, when they uh, was on uh, the, how it is, nuclear power plant, I was really panicked because uh, they were terrorizing the people uh, with this big nuclear power station. And I went there. I was in the west of Ukraine uh, like for two months, and then come back uh, in the beginning of in the end of the spring and beginning of uh, the summer uh, to my hometown because I was lucky uh, to have my job, to have my home, and uh, uh, I don't need uh, to go to be refugee. Uh, because I have place uh, to work here and so many people in Ukraine, they uh, have no these possi possibilities, you know. So uh, I'm working here, like I will show you, share you also. This is sculptures and this is sculptures, the same uh, form uh, and uh, how you can see how the color offense to the form, you, you know, uh, and uh, the shining, this is the same uh, uh, photo um, uh, photo situation, the ISO is the same, the settings are the same, so it's not the perfect photos for these uh, sculptures, but it's a good re representation uh, of what I like about ceramic, 
and what I want to see in the art in ceramic. Very interesting. This is this works uh, together. And uh, as uh, uh, Julia told, I work in the uh, municipal uh, um, company. It's uh, uh, the city council uh, give us the budget money for making some social work and educational activity. And pre-war, we made some uh, social programs. Uh, we work with the urban environment. Uh, environment. I'm sorry, very hard word. Uh, and uh, made uh, the last uh, of our big project was in the autumn. It was the museum of, uh, uh, of Vadim Sidur. It's the sculptor who was born in uh, my city, Dnipro. But uh, uh, Russians told everybody that he is Russian sculptor. So uh, one part of my job uh, and the job of my uh, uh, company is uh, to um, speak that uh, the Ukrainian artist, actually Ukrainian artist, not the Russian artist, you know, because uh, Russian culture, as you know, it's uh, not what you know about her. For example, Malevich is uh, the artist who will know, and everybody thinks that he is Russian, but actually he's Ukrainian, and so on. So, uh, in honor of this uh, artist Vadim Sidur, we made uh, his uh, museum and I was the chief of art uh, part. Uh, here you see, can see some sculptures and uh, uh, for sure I include some ceramic parts there. This is uh, not his works, it's like the different artists uh, work in this project and we uh, have interpretation of his small works, uh, his small sketches. And uh, this artist, he was born in my city and he was uh, the soldier in the uh, World War II. He was really traumatized by the war. And uh, for me, it, I uh, had experience of his art. His art is really traumatized, really deeply. And uh, now I can relate of this really, like I know what he was talking about, like, because I can see it on my real life. This is the, uh, uh, these um, ceramic, uh, uh, I don't know how it's tiles. And it's uh, one, uh, like three and a half feet, like one and uh, high, like one meter high, a little more, even more. Like, uh, so uh, this is his drawing and what we made, it was his uh, like interpretation of his work. So uh, also this is my friend, uh, Marta. Now she is refugees and she uh, not able to work properly like uh, she was helping with this project with me this is uh, when uh, we start the work with this uh, ceramic tiles uh, of uh, Vadim Sirdor work uh, so uh, it was a very really fun time before the war and also this is my tiles of his uh, graphic and uh, it's not my uh, drawings, it's his drawings uh, where I uh, put into the ceramic tiles. So like, uh, it's about what I do in my work. So we make art for, uh, uh, for budget money, for, for budget funds, so. And then the war starts. Uh, this is uh, the hole. This is uh, the guy in the orange. It's my partner, he's two meter high. So you can uh, uh, know like it's one kilometer from my home uh, because I live near the in, uh, critical infrastructure and they just bombed uh, our uh, heat station like really often. So we have a lot of near my uh, apartment, this stuff. Uh, so we, we just can go for a walk and see this. Uh, if you don't know, uh, the geography of Ukraine, it's okay. Uh, here is the 
uh, yellow uh, strike. This is Dnipro, and the red zone is the war. So it's 100 kilometers. And the green zones in Ukraine, it's uh, where our uh, forces were like uh, safe and uh, like go push them back like this. So I live here, it's my hometown. And uh, 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 in the beginning of the war, like I was in Lviv, it's like, can you see the mouse on my screen? No? Yes, yes. this is Lviv. <laughs> yes, this is Lviv. Uh, I went from here to here because it's near the border and I uh, uh, I was studied there like uh, when I was student uh, I studied sculpture in this uh, town so I thought like uh, and here it is here it's uh, the nuclear power plant so I was pretty like uh, uh, I have no cultural words for this so I went to Lviv uh, because it's like near the border and I have friends there and I thought that if the uh, situation will be like really, really screwed, uh, I will like cross the border. But uh, um, I was so happy that I uh, I have no needs for, for this, you know, because uh, I have a possibility to work. So we came back, this is my workshop. Uh, and this is my partner, uh, and we start to work again. And uh, first half year was really, really hard to uh, work in mental, uh, uh, because uh, you didn't know why are you existing, you know, because why the art is important, why uh, we are doing what we do. Uh, for example, I can't drive the car like it's a common in Ukraine. Uh, I can't like do uh, what the military and the army needs. But and then we decide to uh, work uh, with uh, some old uh, sketches and old works and uh, just uh, make them bigger and also work socially. I will show you later. And so we made this uh, series of girls uh, and it's hot summer girl. And uh, for uh, occasion, uh, it, uh, we made it her, uh, this girl and uh, it was exhibition uh, from uh, refugees from Mariupol because Dnipro is uh, the city where a lot of refugees are from Donetsk, Lugansk and all, all these, uh, uh, I can show you all this line, all this line, uh, it's like uh, the war line and so a lot of people come here, especially from Donetsk and especially from Mariupol. And we made an exhibition uh, in the Museum of uh, Dnipro history, of my city uh, history. And uh, uh, they have um, ground floor. Uh, uh, they use it like a shelter uh, from where the uh, missiles are coming. And uh, we made this exhibition. We are helping this museum and uh, this work uh, was like a marine girl, you know, and uh, then I start to see the purpose because people from Mariupol who were survived, and this is the part of exhibition uh, we're just making, and they uh, come there and they have a relief. Uh, and so that is uh, the point when I realize that I can be important, I can be not, not in the important, uh, my work can be important. Uh, so uh, this is the other girl uh, from this series is with the grapes and uh, uh, I show you this with the one purpose. It's like uh, the struggles uh, because my oh, kiln yeah. is uh, dependent on yeah. electricity. And uh, you see, this is the same grapes, uh, the same, uh, I work with the, uh, we call it shamot, I think it's fire clay uh, on the cone six. Uh, but because of uh, the heating process, uh, sometimes like we had uh, four per four hours, like four hours you have uh, light, four hours you don't have light. So the problem is how to get uh, the kiln process 
going like uh, cone six it's a lot for for for, uh, for hours and so it's the, it's the same coat of the same glaze the same uh, kind of temperature because we don't work with the cones we work with the temperature in ukraine uh, and uh, the regime uh, was different because of light so uh, i was just putting my art into the kiln and i said okay we'll do something will uh, come uh, from the kiln and uh, this is the struggle right now that you don't know what you'll get uh, the other girl uh, it, they are my this is my art uh, but it's not only my it's my and my partner for sure like you, you need to know this uh, and also my um, uh, company uh, we start to make some projects, uh, not uh, like we made before. Uh, this is uh, the artist uh, uh, road, I think, Ali, uh, where we uh, start to people uh, want to meet somewhere and to discuss the war and uh, have a relief and have a place to communicate because it's a lot of stories and a lot of tension and uh, people need to have a uh, break uh, they deserve it in ukraine uh, and so we open the space uh, where people can come have exhibition and also have some um, poetry evenings and so on uh, for people it's free always because we were working with the budget money so it's important to uh important place to communicate people uh for community like erin erin uh, told us because it's really important uh i'm sorry if i'm wrong with your name <laughs> and uh, this is uh uh we also made this is vadim sidur i told you before before uh, and i made his portrait uh in in style which he work uh, he worked with this style and i made his portrait with this his style kind of like that uh, and we work on this project uh, with my partner and it's also like meter and a half high uh, so my goal is made like 15 square meters uh, tiles and beautiful monumental art uh, in, in the future. I hope I will do this. Uh, and uh, how the war uh, uh, do with my art. Uh, first, uh, the, the three points. Uh, it's mental health. Uh, it's uh, will have the society with the really traumatized people who will come back from the war and they will come to the very traumatized society. It's uh, really mm, not the same when you have war in the other country and then you come back to the health society. Uh, this is will have a lot of problems. And uh, for example, I go to the therapist and uh, do meds because it's uh, I have no my own forces and it's okay I speak about this because everybody need to have a good mental health like because you can't handle in in this situation by your own uh, and so uh, the two stuff it's like uh, logistic is bad uh, and um, now we have our production it's also near the front line and the production is not available and fire clay is not available. I bought maybe one ton uh, of, uh, it's like 1,000 uh, kilos uh, in the beginning of the war because they were evacuated the production and I was really quick to do, uh, to do this. And uh, also uh, like after this, I, I don't know when it's uh, the uh, clay will I finished my clay and I don't know, I, I need to switch to something else. And uh, the, sec uh, the third one is uh, technology. So the technology now is doomed. 
<laughs> so for, lucky for me, I, I don't make uh, utility uh, forms. Uh, people don't drink from the sculptures. So I have more free space uh, for do uh, my art. And uh, I choose metallics and uh, I choose uh, slips for the work because it's more, um, you can control it more. Unfortunately, uh, the glaze, you see what is going on with the glazes. So it's the same, basically the same, but the result is uh, obviously um, uh, so much different. So after that, I start to see the point of my work. I was able not to do only the girls and the grapes and some flowers. Uh, I was able to make some um, reflections. Uh, and it's really hard. And uh, we have uh, now the three works. It's like different varieties, but it, it's, I think we'll make more. We call it gold. And it's uh, the first one. It's uh, the person who's blind and have, have no arm. It's about tortures and about uh, slavery because they are trafficking the people and uh, the civilians and uh, also all the people who are now blind and want to have free and no armed. And they uh, like, I, I I can't speak. It's like really, really emotional, but you can see it's the blind person uh, unarmed and really. And this uh, work, it's uh, combatants. I don't know it's if it, I translated properly, but it's uh, about uh, the soldiers. Uh, who was in Mariupol also, and uh, these people who are in the trenches and they are working, that uh, th their work is really tough. This uh, brotherhood, sisterhood, and uh, soldierhood, and uh, people are supporting each other in the really uh, struggling time. And uh, the last work and the last photo. I have, it's the last work, I, I didn't publish it uh, yet. Uh, and it's about uh, support. And uh, it's like perspective of our life. So uh, we, will, we are deeply traumatized, I know this. And I know we'll have really big struggles after. But uh, I want to be the voice uh, people will see the art like this and they will say, yes, we are like this and we accept this and we can live with this because like uh, during the Soviet Union time after the war, uh, they made uh, such stuff like the soldier who was amputees and uh, have some uh, uh, trauma, they just put them uh, to the special cities where they were like leave only these uh, traumatized people like only amputees it's true and uh, so people uh, couldn't see all this trauma and i don't want uh, here i want to be inclusive our society like to accept everyone because people like it's children are amputees and uh, a lot of physical and uh, moral trauma like mental trauma and uh, we need to leave this accept this and normalize this because unfortunately it's a big deal uh, I, I think not only in Ukraine uh, but in the world uh, not to accept these people and uh, these lives and their lives are really important and I want to work with the in future I want to after the war work with the um like spaces uh which will be really comfortable for these people who are not uh, super mobile you know uh, the spaces they can go uh and um, uh, uh, like i know what i will do after the war i really know now like i i am able to work maybe six hours a day like 
pre-war, I was working 10 or 12. So I have no much energy, but I will have because we have the purpose and the purpose is accept acceptance. So thank you very much because like for me, it's also really important to speak uh, because I was closed myself in my workshop and not communicate with people in, uh, much. So like just work and work and work. So uh, thank you for helping me with my journey. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nadia. Uh, a really moving presentation. Uh, and uh, you've brought up so many important topics in your speech, starting from, you know, the availability of clay and electricity for a ceramicist work and ending with the inclusivity, inclusiveness, sorry, of society to people who were injured by the war. Um, if people have questions or comments, I invite you to write them in the chat and I will, will read them aloud in a few minutes. Um, I just want to take this moment to appreciate your work, Nadia, both your, your own creative um, pieces because they are really, really touching. And I think they resonate with many of us, with, they resonate with me as well. And also your work as an um, uh, art, uh, curator art worker who creates spaces for other people to come together and to talk and to experience this short periods of you know peace am amongst the war so thank you so much for doing this um, let's see what we have in chat uh, so Iran asks if there are any clay deposits in Ukraine that you could mine your own clay from rather than buying it? You can uh, I think yes, yes, uh, but uh, uh, I, I don't want, uh, <laughs> seriously, I have a lot of job uh, uh, also like not relatable to my art. And so uh, uh, like my art, it's more like over my work, you know? And so to process the clay, it's hard enough. And also uh, the smiles, uh, you need to have a lot of tests. And now we have no like electricity in the normal stuff. Like I always pray about like, okay, my work will be okay. It's, it won't be explode every time, every time like right now seriously and so like uh, process uh, uh, get more job for me in uh, like I, I have no mental power for this seriously and physical also i i lost i think six pounds uh, like uh, oh no no I, I i wrote like i don't know 12 pounds i lost 12 pounds it's like uh, six kilos uh, because i'm really nervous and it's not okay. It's uh, you shouldn't do this. Uh, don't be skinny. It's like only bones and no power. <laughs> not good. <laughs> I have no power to process the clay. I'm sorry. Yeah, mining your own clay is can be <laughs> so so hard. I, I I used to do it uh, just because of interest and because of sustainability reasons before the war, not now. Yeah, and it's so mm, higher than you. Uh, another option could be not firing your works, but that's that's a whole a whole different conversation. Uh, more questions or co and comments in the chat. So Jill writes really emotive work. Uh, thank you, wonderful. Uh, and Robin says your Samuel girls are so different from the reflections you're doing now. It's interesting that both of these series were made since the war started. The girls seem to be placed in public spaces to interact with people around them. Where do you imagine these reflection sculptures to be placed? Like your later sculptures? Later, like uh, these small ones, I think they are more sketches. Uh, 
like these girls, I think it's just uh, the normal sizes and they need to go to the gardens and small spaces like uh, coffee shops and so on, like with some beautiful uh, bushes and so on. But uh, the uh, reflection works, I think uh, they should be like uh, maybe two meter high and go publicly, like to maybe some public space indoor or outdoor, because uh, I think we'll have a lot of uh, stories uh, and uh, people will would need uh, to see this. And I think that uh, I want them publicly, like in the parks and uh, uh, alleys and so on. So uh, city squares, I hope uh, we'll have uh, resources for this. I hope because like the art, I was really surprised uh, because the uh, city council gave, gave us money for this year because I thought that uh, I, I wouldn't have ability to work this year uh, because of the crisis in Ukraine. Uh, so they gave us money, but we do a lot of uh, social work and um, not so much time for art. And so not so much time for mining the clay. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so yeah hopefully there is money and this bigger version of these sculptures can go to public spaces uh, one option could be trying to fundraise maybe uh, a few more comments questions we have about five minutes uh, before we have to wrap up so they are Annette uh, writes such powerful works and thoughts by all of you and Emmy asks uh, how may may we be the best support for you and your work? How to support you from abroad? Uh, I think the biggest support uh, for all Ukrainians it's just speak about us and uh, as you as a participant of uh, such events, it's really important for us to have a voice, uh, not to be f f like. For like forgotten, forgotten. Yes, I'm sorry, <laughs> forgotten and uh, forgotten. Yes, uh, and uh, like uh, first, what we need for support, it's like uh, win the war. Uh, we need uh, Russians troops are not here. Uh, I don't want to think about my friends, uh, sculptors, really good artists who are dead right now because they were like i don't need those thoughts i don't uh, want to, to uh, think about the brother of my partner who is a soldier now i want them uh, come home and make the future this is the uh, the main support so if you can speak, if you can write to some uh, government supporters and so on and speak about Ukraine and just don't uh, uh, stop it, it's the biggest one because the main problem is Russia who's attacking us, who is uh, uh, lying about Ukraine, uh, who is conquer us like it's not the conflict of one year or eight year it's like this situation it's more 300 years ukrainians are in this situation like generation through generations like my uh, grandmothers uh, they were in the same situation when they were a kid they survivor of the war with russia so my grandparents it's the true and it's uh, everybody in Ukraine. Uh, you see us, we are the kids, uh, grandsons, granddaughters of survivors of Russian aggression. So uh, the main problem is Russians. Don't trust them, uh, don't believe them, uh, just question them. And uh, thank you for support us and now you can hear us is really important thank you
Thank you so much, Nadia. I'm, I'm sharing the Instagram links to all the presenters who's, uh, who were with us tonight because someone asked. Um, just a few more comments. Um, the work that you are doing is so very important. Thank you for sharing your experiences. It's humbling to know how hard you are able to work and support others and build plans for the future for others. You are both preserving and making history. Thank you, Paulina, for this comment. The arts need to be seen in public, especially if your goal is to educate and facilitate acceptance. Barb, thank you for this comment. Sherry says, thank you, Erin, um, Ivan, Nadia, and Yulia. You really are warriors. We see you and we hear you. Robin asks where online we can find this work. Uh, I'll share all the links. Anet says, it would be great to make an exhibit with your works and those of other artists working with clay in the context of war to be shown not only in Ukraine but in other places as well. Your messages are so important and meaningful apart from time and place. Um, yeah, thank you, Annette. I know that there are efforts and initiatives uh, just to do just that. One is the exhibitions uh, of ceramic bricks that different artists of Ukraine uh, have made during the war. They were exhibited in Kiev, and now there is an, um, an intention to show them in Turkey. We know uh, that there is a catastrophic earthquake in Turkey, um, uh, so I don't know how the situation will, will, will unfold, but there definitely is intention to showcase this art uh, beyond Ukraine, um, and I hope uh, it happens. So just a few closing remarks. Um, first of all, thank you all the presenters, uh, Aaron, Ivan, and Nadia, because you have opened your hearts tonight for us and you have shared uh, your deep emotions. And we all know, and I know personally, that it's very difficult to talk about your experience of war. And uh, thank you for being open about that. This conversation could go for hours and hours, and it still won't be enough. But I want to believe that today we made an important step, important steps to um, to talk about that and to connect with each other because this this term connection and um, conversation has emerged so many times during our conversations uh, today. I feel that human connection is one of the most powerful tools and sources for healing. So thank you for all, uh, everyone today for being part of that. And another thank you for everyone of you who keep supporting uh, Ukraine and other countries who are going through wars. I know personally many of you, uh, and I want to share my personal thank yous for your uh, donations, your kind messages, spreading the news, uh, supporting potters and ceramicists directly by buying their art, um, and all other things that you are doing. Uh, I invite you to follow our today's speakers on Instagram. Uh, you can also subscribe to my account. I am here and now pottery, here and now pottery on Instagram, Facebook, Behance and Patreon. Um, this is the first webinar of the series Saving the World as a Potter. I hope to be able, if everything goes fine, uh, to continue it. Uh, and um, I'll save this recording and hopefully share it in a few days. You'll be able to see it. Um, maybe just going through the chat quickly again to see if there's anything uh, that needs to be read aloud. Erin, thank you so much for including me in this powerful presentation. I hope we can all meet again in a more peaceful and happier circumstances. Yay to this. Please be safe. Thank you for organizing this encounter. I'm inspired by artist protest and look forward for following each of you and becoming an active participant in your message. Thank you so much, Emmy. Um, mm -hmm. 
thank you all who joined and participated. Really honored and touched to be present here. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you for the meeting. Uh, all right, then. Uh, it's been a long evening or morning. Um, I guess it's time to wrap up and uh, to wish peace and um, prosperity for all. Let's keep fighting in all in our means. Thank you.